Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about mess of multiple truths. So let's understand truth deeply itself. Well, why the heck we need truth so much? Well, it's the core logic of humanity. It's like how the heck humanity got out of the, like, you know, basically animal kingdom, so to say. Well, because we started to trust each other. We basically went from like, hey, uh, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. That's all there is to it. And we need it. And you can understand its value as a, so important that every religion, take whichever religion on this planet you want, they will generally have something to talk about truth. For example, some religion will say, truth will set you free just to signify how important it is. Some religion will say it's true for all people in all time and all places. So understand this, like truth is very important to even to religion. So that should and be mindful, all religion on the planet that is old enough generally has a basically a guidance about truth. That's how important it is. And we all need it. It's not optional thing for us. It's not like, uh, you know, if people are lying a little bit, no, no, no. It, it gets out of hand very quickly and it's lethal for us. So it's a compulsory thing and if we have failure, it could turn lethal for us and it does turn lethal for many people, be it uh, Theranos, be it this porn star, uh, be it this basically. That woman is quite amazing. Like uh, the amount of money she took from uh, people who are in their pensions, damn. Like she literally successfully managed to get millions of dollars in NFT, what we call a rug pull protocol. Uh, like flat out lies, be it Soviet Union, be it CCP. So you have to understand, all of these were built on lies. And why the heck lies goes so deep is simply because there are multiple truths. So why the heck truth has this sort of complexity? Many times we kind of think in truth in a sense like, hey, it's easy, it's truth, tell the truth, so to say. But the world is too complex and integrated. Complexity as in like, there could be layers to things. Integrated meaning is generally not one person. Whatever you see, even if like you're seeing Chernobyl, you're seeing uh, Turkey earthquake, whatever you're seeing, it's never one person's uh, doing, so to say. There will always be multiple people uh, working on it on multiple layers of time. For example, somebody did something in 2000, somebody did something after 2010, somebody did something in 2050, and that led to that. That's the whole complexity aspect. For example, this is Bhopal gas tragedy, one of the worst incidents in India. And here's deal, the company was dealing with something super duper hyper toxic. And the engineers designed it in such a way they were like, hey, this is toxic. How about we have a fail safe? How about we have a fail safe on top of that fail safe? How about we have another layer of fail safe? Awesome. Three layers of fail safe. None of them were working on that fateful day on the Bhopal gas tragedy. Day. And why? Lies. So that's the whole thing. The complexity of uh, truth is so complex many times that it allows lies to literally go between one of those layers. It's like there are five, six layers. It's like just slide lie in one places and nobody will be able to detect it. And tragedies happen. This is basically China's famine, which was caused by themselves. And uh, another lie, like, you know, this the worst lie that I have ever heard is like overpopulation. There is no such thing as overpopulation. Humanity is a problem solving engine. We solve a problem. The population that we have right now, if you would have told it to 50 years ago, nobody would have believed it. If you have told that time's population to 100 years ago, nobody would have believed you. That time's do that same thing. Humanity has always like, oh, we cannot feed more than 3 billion people. We are feeding 8 billion people at this point in time. Of course, we are not perfect at it. We are not like what, you know, 100% efficient at it, but we got it down. And again, we are becoming better, 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 even better. So China on that line, like, you know, population is a bad thing. They introduced one child policy. The amount of damage this puppy caused, and it's brutal. And not to mention at this point in time, many Chinese people are thinking that the current misery that they are going through, it's because of this, the amount of children they poofed out of existence was idiotically high. Like, why do you think they literally were doing what we call uh, basically water uh, tub uh, birth? Because if it's something that you do not want, you do not let it out. And that's how they showed, like, you know. So, the, like, the amount of blood the people have on their hand, it's one of those things that, like, you cannot wash it. Like, you cannot say, oh, CCP made us do it. Like, at some point, it's like, no, it's you. So, the complexity comes in this sort of way. Like, all these things were built on lies and people paid the price. So let's take a real world example of this multiple truth. So Titanic, I'm reasonably sure majority of you know about it. So why did Titanic sank? Think about it. Why did Titanic sank? Well, depending on different people, you will get different answer and all of them would be true. For example, captain. If you talk to anyone who's the important of like taking care of a ship, they're like, dude, captain was stupid. Captain, once after it hit the iceberg, it should not have moved the ship 
after that. Now, why did he move the ship? Because there was an engineer on board that claimed it's like, oh, ship is completely fine. It's like, no, you do not put strain on injured equipment. It's same goes for aeroplan, uh, aircraft pilots also. It's like, if aircraft is damaged, you land that puppy. You do not go top gun on it. You land that puppy. Same on boats. If there is damage, if there's a wound on the ship, hull is around, let's say, 10 meters square, it will become 20 meters square the moment you start to push the ship through water. So fundamentally, that literally made a problem that was bad to yeah, did. Then uh, you talk to people who are dealing with communications, they will say there was no law for 20 into 7 telegraph. What does that mean? That simply means in the days of Titanic, wireless telegram was a thing that people were doing. And before uh, Titanic happened, there was a uh, ship that uh, hit an uh, iceberg, started to sink. It sent a wireless telegram. Other ship that was very close to it, like at two hours, I think it was close to it. And they came and rescued people. Nobody even heard about it. It was like minor inconvenience. Titanic had that system. All the ships in the fleet that was moving around in that area had it. Had here's deal. There was no rule on occupying that station. Basically, in the boat, there would be room for a telegraph room. It was not 24 into 7 manned. After this incident, it was manned 24 into 7, meaning you will have three people like, you know, uh, circulating, but you will always have somebody listening because on the day Titanic got boomed, it sent out a SOS message. Now, here's the SOS message sent uh, to a boat that was like around eight to nine hours away. But it got there. Now here's the deal. There was a boat that was two hours ago. Like, you know, just if they had received the signal, they could have reached Titanic in two hours. Basically, before the ship even broke apart. So how the heck that did not happen? Again, the room, basically, where that telegram room, that operator was sleeping. It was like, yeah, it's night time, I'm sleeping. There was no 24 into 7. If they would have received the SOS, half of the lives, like majority of the problem, it would have turned into a minor inconvenience. Then you ask engineers, they will say low quality rivets were used. Like, Why the heck rivets are important? Here's the deal. Back in the days, we did not have good enough welding technology. So we used rivets. Rivets are metal stuff that like you put it there like a metal rod and then you hammer from both sides. Now, if you are using what we call uh, basically pneumatic hammers, uh, they were using it back in the days. Uh, basically during the engine area, they were using pneumatic hammers. So they had very top quality rivets. Now, when they wanted to do the riveting using hands, again, be mindful, a person has only one horsepower ma maximum. So at that point in time, if you give a person a hammer and bam it, like it's not gonna dent that much. So they had to use a softer alloy. Now, ideally that should not have been used for hull. That should have been used for other things, internal structure and all that just never for hull. Hull should have always had top quality rivets because again, if it gets hit by ice, ice is not magic. Ice is not like vibranium. It should not be able to like just go through your steel. Again, steel did not buckle that much. It's the rivet, the joints, that joint could not hold it because again, the rivets were weak. The damage that should have been like, let's say one square meter became 25 square meter because the rivets were the weak link. That part is also true. If they did not had uh, like, you know, basically pneumatic hammer, uh, hammering all the top quality rivets, the boat would have hit the ice. And if the captain would have not have made the mistake of like, hey, let's not uh, move a injured ship, ship would have been like, I'm fine, bro. I got this. I'm going to stay on water. Like, I'm not even going to sink. Like, I'm good. I'm good. It was designed in such a way that it was had four compartment. If it fills up with water, they're like, bro, we good. Fifth, we not good. So again, it should not have ever been possible to damage four compartments simultaneously if they had used quality rivets. Even with that sort of system, lifeboats were a thing. So why the heck it had so few lifeboats? Back in the day, you, uh, basically whole of Europe, so to say, started to use trading, a lot of boat trading. So they had a lot of accidents. So they realized lifeboats should be a thing. So they built a law that this many lifeboats should be there. Here's the deal. That law was never upgraded and it had nothing to do with capacity. It was just a blank number. It's like, you should have this many. Nowadays, people have learned from that mistake where it's like, you should have 150% capacity. What does that mean? That simply means even if you lose like, you know, few percent of your lifeboat, you should be able to house every person. Because modern liners are so big, so behemoth, that if something bad happens, it's something really bad. So fundamentally means you may have a scenario where majority of lifeboats would be compromised. So that's why they must have overcapacity. And then they can be like, yeah, some chances that it will survive. So all of these are true. That's the problem. Uh, why the heck lies slides in so deep? Like, because again, there are so many layers to truth. How the heck you know which one that you are dealing with? And it's like, life is never simple. And see, I never talked about iceberg. Because again, iceberg was a common thing. There were many boats that hit iceberg. They were like, eh. it was always treated as like a minor loss. Again, inconvenient, lot of money wasted, but never as a tragedy of Titanic. How the heck that happened? This many things happened. Then we come to another uh, place example of uh, basically 
Amagasaki derailment. Now, this is Japanese uh, train incident. So, what happened was kind of odd is basically a train went to a building at full speed. Full speed. Train, full speed, bam, to a building. How the heck that happened? Well, reality was uh, it was at curve. Train was way too hyper speed at that curve. So, it just flew off the rail and hit into a building. Lot of loss of life. And it was at that point in time, till this, even this day, it was one of the worst, uh, basically, what you call a rail crash, so to say. Like, really, really brutal. So how the heck that happened? Well, again, multiple truth. First fact was there was no auto speed limiter, which is ironic. They had that system. Even in that year, they had that system. It was just not implemented on that track or that train. So they had the system to manage this. They had a system where it was like, hey, curve is coming out. How about you apply some brakes? How about if the pilot does not apply some brakes, you apply emergency brake as an automated system. That was developed, that was deployed in Japanese railway system, but not everywhere. That gap in the armor lead to this incident. Now that's one truth. Is that true? Absolutely. But there is another truth. The truth was that drivers were brutally punished, brutally punished for uh, making mistakes. Now, I had the luxury of working with people who have worked with Japanese people and all of them saying like, do not work with Japanese people. And again, uh, if you understand their culture truly, you're like, dude, I understand why you have sex crisis. I understand why you're dying. Like these people are mental. Like here's the, this is how the driver of this train before this incident was punished. It's like, um, if you are late, and I do not mean late by one hour. I mean, if you are late by a few seconds, as in like 40 seconds, 30 seconds, these sort of seconds, if you're late by it, like again, you did not throttle it properly, you did not uh, break, apply brake properly, you had some quote unquote incident, you were be reprimanded. And in that system, they will not retrain you, they will humiliate you. And I'm not joking, this was their official policy that we're gonna humiliate you. How the heck they're gonna humiliate you? They're gonna make you menial work. And then if you have to go to toilet, you have to ask an adult. Not even joking, that's how they trained, uh, basically, quote-unquote, retrained, uh, basically, driver. That driver made a mistake, like, two or three times ago, and they did not even have the balls to, like, hey, you made mistakes more than one, just be off, you know, uh, go away. Like, they did not even have the balls to do that. They humiliated him multiple times. And this was a common thing in Japan. It's like, we're gonna humiliate you for making a mistake. I'm like, what kind of smoke you are smoking, man? And again, that person, at that point in time, was late. So when they had uh, that sort of delay, he was trying to overspeed. He was trying to gain back those few seconds. Consequence, he was like foggy. Of course, you would be foggy if you are that worried about things. You will not be focusing on the gauges saying, hey, bro, uh, bit high speed for this turn. He did not even apply emergency. He saw it, like he saw the curve, like randomly, like, you know, he can't into focus and he's like, okay, I should slow down. But here's the deal. he did not apply emergency brake. He applied service brake because he did not want it to lose speed. He could have made that decision. It's like, hey, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna apply emergency brake because I want to live. No, it's like, and what if I'm delayed? And uh, be mindful, there will be even harsher punishment if you were uh, apply emergency brake. So that sort of corporate punishment is kind of okay in Japan. I'm like, what the heck? It's like people say American are toxic, uh, like you know, Steve Jobs is, or Bill Gates is toxic. It's like this puppy is like on a whole different level. Like this guy makes Amazon look good. That's how brutal Japanese people are. Like they forgot that they are human. They literally think they are worker bees. They come into this world to work and die. It's like, no, do not insult life like that. If you do, sex crisis will be least of your problem. You will disappear from map. And again, that happened 60 years ago. So that's the whole thing. The driver were punished. Like, is that true? Absolutely. Was that cause of the accident? Absolutely. Should have been there a speed limit, automatic speed limit system? Absolutely. That's the whole point. You should never have one point of failure. You should have multiple things have to go wrong in order for any incident. And again, all of this, where it came from? This came from this intolerant idea of like, uh, we cannot tolerate delay. Like seconds. I'm not talking minutes, hours or days. I'm talking seconds. They cannot tolerate it. It's like, you know, I really need to be on that second. It's like, and you wonder why the heck young people are just giving up on life. Why the heck have a worse moment is it? like, if you live in a world that is so pointless that every second of your life is predetermined, predefined, why the heck you even bother? It's like, why the heck this train even had a driver? It just automated the damn system. So that's the whole thing. Never one thing. It's like, was there automatic speed limiter? No. Was that the sole cause? No. Uh, was there like a really, really toxic culture in the Japanese system? If you go any study, ask any Japanese people who like actually stay there, it's like, dude, you have to apologize to other people if you fall sick. I'm like, no, man, no, no, just no. Like, no, it's not good. Like, flat out not good. And not to mention, I always say, all other numbers means nothing if your birth rate is low. You can say, we are the richest person. Do you have any kids? No. Then you're dead. As simple as that. Like, if anybody tells you Japan is good, no, they're not. Not.
just talk. And this was like first time to like, why? This is how you train your people, retrain your people. So we come to the most horrifying aspect of it. There is no answer. Meaning, right now, the world is going through that AI revolution, and everybody is like, AI will save us all. It's like, no. We cannot parse out truth. We have million years of evolution here, and we can't do this. How do you expect AI to do it? You can't. We literally flat out, we cannot. Why? Well, simple. Multiple layers of truth makes it difficult to do. Like, truth is rarely pure and never simple. Oscar Wilde said that. And it's kind of amazing. Like, you really think about it. Truth is like, if you if somebody is looking from outside of that train accident, they're like, oh, this happened, that's no. You have to take into that account. You have to take per people's emotions into account. Same with Titanic. It's like, hey, iceberg, no. Iceberg should have been like, oh, you will, you know, damaged your wheel. It should not turn that lethal. Same thing. It's never that easy, never. So where does it all come down to? Like, what is the final essence? Final essence is always faith and trust. Meaning, why do you trust your teacher? You don't. You just have to trust them. There is no alternative. Why do you have faith in your doctors? You don't. You have to. For example, in India, we have amazing medical technology. A number of doctors are really, really good. Here's the deal. Many of them have bad ethics. And that's really bad. Like, I'm saying that while my brother is a doctor. Even he himself is like, flat out, it's brutal to go to any poor places doctor. It's like, they will exploit you till you are almost dead and then they'll transfer you to a governmental hospital and then you die. So, they do not have to share that we had loss of life. Like, it's brutal. It's like, exploitative terms is really bad. Like, I had to do RCT on my teeth here in my hometown. And then I was just like, it was too painful, too brutal. I simply go to other state, other uh, mega city. There I got it done. I said, everything is fine, dandy, costed less. And I was happy. So why, why the heck that happened? Ethics. The doctors that were there, they were not ethical about it. They're like, if again, majority of Indian medical problem would be solved instantaneously. If doctors were like, you know what? This case is beyond my understanding. Again, I'm not God. I'm not like, you know, all knowing AI. I do not understand this. How about I transfer it before it becomes lethal? How about that? We don't. So that's the whole thing. We just always, that's the same thing with everything else. It's just always hope for ethics. Now, why the heck we have such a poor system with ethics? We had ecosystem society, all that jazz going on thousands of years, and it was working well. Never ever in the history of humanity we had ethics as a problem. So how the heck we have ethics as a problem now? Well, broken family was never a thing. I always specify a country is a collection of things. Primary collection of things is cell. Cell is made out of family, this puppy. Governments, basically, a judiciary body literally dropped an axe in that. Once this breaks, everything else falls apart because the kids, children, be it boy, be it girl, they have no idea how the heck to be ethical. Because what they saw, the bonds that are supposed to be unbreakable, just became an alimony extraction tool. At that point in time, it's like, they saw it. Like, that's what they went through. At that point in time, you cannot teach them ethics because they inherently do not understand it. So, it's like... All the doctors that are like uh, coming out of there, all the children that are coming out of it, they are messed up beyond repair because they do not have understanding of values. They do not have faith or trust or ethics. Try teaching them that. Like you can't, you can't, like these things are what you call um, built things. These are built day by day, year after year, year after year. Then you can go to real world and be like, I got this. If you do not have these things, you are very fragile and very brutal to other people. So it makes you uh, basically very vulnerable, which is happening to all the free world. It's happening to Japan, it's happening to South Korea, it's happening to India, it's happening to USA, it's happening to whole of Europe. Every free country is dealing with that. Democracy, basically. So, and this also creates another fail-safe, uh, not basically, another line of defense fails, that is, parasocial relationship becomes a thing. Like back in my days, as in like uh, 9 or 10 years ago, when I opened my first YouTube channel, entirety of YouTube was filled with, basically, people teaching you things. It was tutorial. Basically, everything was like just a tutorial at that point in time. So how the heck from that ecosystem of where you come to learn to we went to this where it's like instead of debates, discussion, learning tools, tutorials, all that jazz, we are like personalities because people no longer like again, these kids no longer have uh, seen understanding of reality. So they create what you call parasocial relationship, meaning they are creating bonds with these sort of people. And now you're like, how the heck they are bonding with that? Again, if you come from a healthy family, you will never create bonds. With it. You're like, hey, I like that guy's work. The end. You won't be like, I like that guy. It's like, dude, that guy is playing a game that you never, you can play on your computer. It's like, it's not about the game. It's about the, the dude. It's like, damn. So that's the whole thing. The parasocial relationship becoming far important part of children. And you will notice this in majority of, um, you know, free world is that why the heck they're spending so much money? Why the heck they're spending so much time? Like one hour, two hours, like, dude, even watch porn and just get over with it. It's like, why the heck they're spending so much time on Twitch? Why? Like the time is like brutal. It's like, bro, 
like again if you're playing game you yourself you are doing something you are just watching someone again parasocial relationship it causes too much damage and when this was done it was not done out of malice let me be very clear i do not have like oh they wanted to like you know destroy thing again they did it but they did not want it to so what does that mean that simply means the worst saying that i have ever heard and i hate it how true it is is that road to hell is paved with good intention this was done as a protective measure the outcome is so bad like in three generations as in each generation is 90 uh, pardon me each generation is 30 years in 90 years the final outcome will be there and it would be so bad they're like it would have been better if you have not interfered that's how bad it will be and it's a known thing it's like when i talk about japan it's like it happened it's past tense so when i talk about south korea it's past tense i'm not talking about something that will happen i'm talking about something that did happen so and again nobody is fixing this part again it can't be fixed like it's world went from good people bad people to men bad it's like might as well make marriage illegal but again how will you exploit a man if you can't exploit men who the hell you will exploit so it's like that's why i respect japanese men so much it's like bro you literally said f to the society is like i'm out it's like you're gonna exploit you exploited my grandfather and then you offed him then you exploited my father you offed him you're gonna exploit me and off my head it's like how about no how about i'm out how about in in a world where i have to be accurate precise to a machine you just do the damn thing with machine i'm out i respect them i respect her first movement it's like damn it's like oh world it's like you should do this for like for what so i can work and die like a worker bee it's like you can build a robot for that so you have to understand if family unit ever breaks at the end and that's why truth is so we are so much vulnerable to like you know nft scams why they are coming from these sort of people how the heck these influencer have so much influence because you do not have stable influence of your family so how the heck we navigate this world well i unfortunately it always comes down to personal compass now are there any good uh, guiding markers yes easy answers are generally always wrong like if somebody gives a do this it will solve all your problem run i'm just talking about that from experience it's like if somebody says apply handbrake do tokyo drift you eat out of there just eat out of there if somebody is like do this it will solve all the problem eat out of there so and this is the ongoing battleground because this is where we stand today the ai war has started and people have to decide who which ai they trust and that's a very scary thought let's just put it that way so this was my presentation on the complexity of messiness of multiple truths Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.